Age 13 was a very dramatic year. My dad and mom split up. Um, mm. My dad was in the Vietnam War and he was at ground zero uh, for the chemical warfare. And they diagnosed me with all with the same chemical stuff from, from Vietnam, which is called Asia Orange. And that's actually inside of me. And the doctors actually told my mom and them I would not live past age 21. I just kind of stopped caring. I didn't really know how to react. It was a very scary and uncertain time for me at that point in time. This one guy came up to me and asked if I would do a favor. And he explained to me I'd take a package to such and such. And when I came back, I would get paid. And I did that. And when I got back, he that's kind of when cocaine was in introduced in my life. And before I knew it, I became a mule for certain groups. Me and my dad, you know, of course, he's... He, uh, he was an alcoholic, kind of into drugs too. But we were actually getting along. The next morning I woke up to my dad with the board with Nils and he started started to hit me on my backside. I got up, cold clocked him, actually knocked him out. And all the thoughts started going in my head, you know, like, like what did I just do? Did this just happen? <laughs> Can I ever come back? You know, all, all, those, all, all, the, all, all the what ifs were going through my head. So the only thing I knew, knew what to do was to leave, go to that group's house, and go uh, go get my fix again. I might have been about 14 at that time. <laughs> I got back and basically became muscle as well as well as as well as a mule. I don't know if I felt like it was the right thing for me to do, but they knew how to make you feel welcomed because they wanted something from me. I was good at going out. I was good at, I was good at snatching up whoever that was on the list. I was good at moving kilos upon kilos over the state line. That's what they needed. I never got caught. I really didn't feel much of it. They, they taught me not to show feelings. <laughs> When they, when I started to get introduced into that, they, they, th this, uh, this certain guy took me to another house where a guy was tied, was, a guy was tied up and gagged, bounded, and he, um, there was four different objects on the table, and I had to pick one, and I picked the, the crowbar, and another guy came, grabbed that, and started beating this guy that was that was tied up and bound he couldn't you know there was no they uh they they started beating him almost to almost to death and i had to sit there and watch it while i was explained you know i i, I am not to snitch i'm not to still i'm not you know i just do these things for him and that's what I, that's what i do and it kind of just be it, it maybe became that that cold, that cold front is what I just, I, I had to have on from then on out, basically. There was really no emotional emotions. It was just either a blank stare or it was a lot of hatred. And then 2016 was when my dad passed away. And he did die from the Asian Orange that I have inside of me. They actually took his legs, and I was actually I was here in South Dakota, and I got and I got a phone call and I talked to my dad when he was in the hospital, and it was it was the first time I actually heard my dad say that he loved me and he was proud of me, and he was dead two hours later. Shortly after my dad and my best friend passed away uh, out of state, um, that was, yeah, I was the last person to see him. He was shot in the head. <laughs> it 
and that's when that, that, I think that's when like the, the the spiral just kept just kept getting worse and believe it or not <laughs> it was actually my third DUI is where I started to turn it all around um I finally got caught h- here in in Rapid City with with meth and the uh, well I was oh I, I, I was in the I was in the cult house I was with my mom <laughs> and I remember walking out of the courthouse and my mom mentioned me going back to Washington and I just stopped and said, no, I can't do that. That's not the best place for me right now. And I stopped and I, and my mom was in disbelief. I said that for one and two, so was I, because that was my out. I could have just left, I, whatever, got high again, would not have cared, but for some reason, God just, Put, put that right in my mouth, like, no, no, you're gonna stay here and, and do it this. From, from that day on, basically, it was, I started listening, my, uh, my aftercare coach, or uh, my aftercare counselor, she started saying church, a very good person at, at NA, which is Narcotics Anonymous, saying the same thing, and then my mom, and my sisters and my brothers, they were all kind of hinting as well. Um, I decided to give church a shot again after 23 plus years. It was not something I wanted to do, but from what I've been hearing from everybody who was staying clean and sober is you, you have to have Jesus in your life. You can't do it by yourself. I couldn't do it by myself. I tried and I failed for 10, 10 months bad. I, I, it wasn't working, so. And a good month and a half into it, my sister comes up to me with the card that said Celebrate Recovery that she got from Kim. And, of course, that was another thing. I was just like, okay, I don't know, but I got to keep doing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, I guess, the, the miracle to happen. It was a step forward to find Jesus. Um, I did ask, ask, ask Jesus in my heart. Uh, uh, it was December before Celebrate Recovery started, and it did not feel like it worked. If that was the best way, if that's if that makes sense. So I tried again, and I was like, I'm still not feeling different. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but. Celebrate Recovery, eventually, it it clicked in that it's not just me asking for, well, just me asking for, for forgiveness. I, I, I started to, to mean it, to want it, and God's love just kind of, it, it, it just, that, that's the best way to explain it, just, exploded exploded <laughs> and I just started to cry because I am forgiven <laughs> um, and my sins are made white as snow I had to change my whole playground um, people places the things I that, that was one I mean that was one thing like I told mom at, 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 at the courthouses I can't go back to Washington why did I tell her that? Still, I don't know. I will never know why. I still think that that was God. Just all of a sudden, thunk, and hey, <laughs> you, you're not going back though. You, it's it's time to come home. All I gotta say is God is good. He's definitely pulled a sinner, uh, a sinner like me, out from way left field, and he brought me back. And it took some time to actually adapt I guess is the best way to say it but through Fountain Springs and through Celebrate Recovery I can actually set, stand stand uh, sorry stand in front of people and say I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ and I am uh, I am over 18 months now with no drugs and alcohol <laughs>